In this video I will push forward to finish all the wiring for the variable frequency drive and the Phoenix CNC controller. The video will be quite long but I will write a list of what I'll be doing in the description along some time codes in case you wish to jump to a scene. To start with I'm extending the variable frequency drive display panel to the outside of the enclosure alongside a pulse width modulation to potentiometer toggle switch. The switch will allow me to override the preset spindle speed from the controller to a speed controlled by the potentiometer. The variable frequency drive I'm using came with a mount for its display, but I had to file the opal plastic a little so it could clip into place. I then connected the display panel using a ribbon cable which was supplied with the variable frequency drive. But to create the length needed I had to use a 10 pin IDC box header which I attached using the machine vise by pressing the headers two ends together. While shortening the cable I also placed it through a copper braided shielding which will be earthed and is there to reduce the likelihood of electromagnetic interference. So I've just soldered the wires onto the normally open terminals. So when this is pressed it closes and the signal is, comes in from the VFD. I'm also going to wire the pulse width modulation and spindle enable signals from the controller to the variable frequency drive. This could be as simple as the short length of 4 core wire on screen now, but I want those signals to go via an on off on switch so I can swap between sending the signal to the VFD and eventually a laser driver. If I also add a relay via the spindle enable pin, which I plan to do, I could use a normal router and prevent the variable frequency drive from receiving those signals by keeping the switch at the off position. So this is the bottom front panel and I'm going to have three buttons which will go to the pause, the resume and the abort. The panel on screen will become the bottom front panel of the enclosure which will include three momentary buttons for the hold, start and abort pins from the controller and a USB panel extension. I am laying out the components before marking and drilling the mounting holes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will be drilled out to 16 uh, millimeters. Those two about, will be about 3 and then whatever that is, 5 or 6 mil. I'm just preparing the wires to connect to the switch and I've just tinned these and added a bit of cable for the shielding. Now I just need to connect these terminals here to the back of this pin. It's going to be a bit, a bit tricky that one. I'm going to use the same uh, colour coordination for the front panels going to the stepper drivers. So one uh, was red and two going to be black. I've actually wired the 5-pin aviation panel mount without taking into consideration the DC power needed for a laser driver board. I guess I could wire that as a separate shielded cable from another panel mount, or depending on the type of driver I use, I could unsolder the spindle enable pins and use their pins for the power instead. Ultimately, knowing how to solder didn't stop me from soldering the wrong things. And those are the spindle enable and pulse width modulation wires with boot ferrules being screwed into their terminals. I think I'm going to take this gland off here 
and put the power cables coming out from the bottom and then just have all the uh, signals go into the controller out of this little hole here so this is now coming through this opening here I'll zoom out and the power is coming in at the bottom just makes it a lot easier to separate the cables while I'm at it I'm going to connect these three switches to the uh, start hold and reset terminals on the on the controller down here I guess green should be the start, red should be the reset, and white will be hold, and then all the blacks are uh, ground. Those wires actually run underneath the stepper drivers. I'm just connecting the ground of the shielding up. Uh, so I bought slightly bigger ones for some of these just so I can put a few more wires in. So I've just put the ground for the wires going to the switch and what will be the wires going to the uh, laser driver eventually I am wiring the e-stop to the variable frequency drive now, but before I commit a length of expensive shielded cable, I use some inexpensive speaker cable to test that I'm wiring everything correctly. So I'm just going to simulate the spindle enable pin being activated. So now if I press this button here, move this up, it's as if the frequency has been sent to the spindle and now if I press the emergency stop that's gone down to zero and in fact the uh, signal from the controller would also stop because there's no power this is weird I've just taken that little bit of wire off and it's still running okay I'm not sure why the fan keeps going um, after I've uh, pressed the emergency stop but the emergency stop is connected to the power supply of the controller and to the uh, emergency stop pin on the variable frequency drive so the source of the uh, enable enabling spindle enable and the PWM is going to be turned off um, and the signal to the VFD to break the motor or break the spindle is also going to be sent so I think this should work obviously I'm not going to really know until I actually wire everything up with the spindle and uh, see what it actually does so I've just cut the wire for the emergency stop on the variable frequency drive that is roughly 92 centimeters so but x1 that goes to the emergency stop x2 that goes to the uh, latching button at the top of the enclosure which is the PWM toggle switch now. X5 is the spindle uh, enable 
terminal and then I have the uh, common ground right at the end and all three of these have their grounds over there and then underneath I have the analog in for the PWM uh, which will be 0 to 10 volts and that will um, set the speed of the spindle uh, by the g-code file that I'll be sending okay um, I went back over some of my previous videos to see how I'd uh, soldered these together because uh, I couldn't find any drawings in my notebook and then I realized why I couldn't find any footage of uh, this part because my soldering was diabolical just before I had the uh, the better soldering iron and actually done some research into what solder I should use uh, so this is kind of a bit messy it would have been nice to put some heat shrink over these just to neaten them up but in any case I just want to know the color coordination so I can rewire the opposite end so a little drawing there so one is brown, two is black, three is grey, four is green, yellow. Okay, this is going to be the uh, panel mount and the socket for the variable frequency drive. I just need to decide where on the enclosure I'm going to put it. I could stick this on the back but then this will protrude quite a bit and if I shove it up here it just means I can make sure the wiring is quite short in there and I keep it away from some of the other cables that go to the front of the enclosure which include the proximity sensors and some of the more sensitive things might put some of this on top as well just to kind of protect it a little bit because I had a green and yellow wire in the cable I used a spare piece of white wire for the screening to the panel mount but I soldered this too far along the braid, which interfered with the gland, so I had to redo this. But I can do this a little bit better. I'm just pulling the braid along from one end just to get it to kind of come as far down as it possibly can. And then on top of that, I'll put a Tighten that up and the glen will hold that in place. One is good, two is good, three, four is good, and then just check the braid. Cool. I repeat the screening for the spindle cable coming into the enclosure. I bought the Weipu panel mounts before soldering finally clicked and these are of the screw terminal variety. So since I've learned how to solder Doing the screw terminals like this is actually really a lot harder. I wasn't filming at the time, but that took a lot longer than it really should have. Um, you've got to be careful that you don't let too much wire come through the holes because they can contact. 
I'm going to need to use framing tacks on the panels as two machine screws are not enough to hold the larger ones without them flexing. So it's brown, grey and then black. I think you really need a magnetic um, screwdriver for this section because I think it's almost impossible to do. I'm now going to check if the spindle can turn on and if the e-stop also works. I hold the jumper wire between the enable pin to simulate the spindle being activated. After I press emergency stop, I'm left with this error, a message on the top, 0.0L. And if I remember correctly, there is a section at the back with uh, faults and abnormalities. So L, OL in fact, is overload. The thing is now, if I put the piece of wire uh, back between the X5 and uh, common ground uh, terminals uh, the spindle won't turn on uh, and you have to reset the variable frequency drive before you can reuse the machine um, so I think I need to have a look at the manual for a little bit just to work out whether I can reduce the length of time that the brake is applied while the emergency stop has been pressed so all the wires on the VFD and controller are now in place and everything seems to work in retrospect, I guess I could have wired the abort pin on the controller to the e-stop as well, but I decided for a harsher stop, killing power. Anyway, I think this video is long enough. Until the next one, thanks again for watching, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to check me out on Instagram, where I put out sneaky peeks of future projects.